What's up, Brandon? Hey, thanks for having me. Um, I appreciate you bringing me on as a speaker. I see there's no one else, so I feel very honored that in the crowd decides you to allow me to speak. Um, yes, indeed. I just joined. I've only been listening for about a minute and a half, but your title actually really drew my interest. You know, uh, what's the issue with uh, praising an anti-black hate crime bill? Um, here, you know, I have a real problem when people say hate crime because, in my opinion, personally speaking, uh, all crime that has a victim is hate crime. It doesn't matter what the, what what's the cause, what justifies it in their minds. Um, if you attack me, I don't care what color your skin is, what color my skin is, what your reason is. What I care about is you attacked me, you know, and that's hateful and that's hate, you know, and, and that's my problem. Um, you know, and, and I know that's really a simple but yet broad statement to make. But at the end of the day, if someone hurts you, if someone attacks you, do you care what the reasoning is or do you just care that you got attacked? Do you care that you were vandalized, you were assaulted, that your property was destroyed? You know, at the end of the day, in my opinion, uh, most people, we don't care what justification. What we care is that we are victimized. Okay, but if that person targeted a specific group just because of how they were born, that makes it different. And that specific group should have some level of protection. Do you agree? Well, I don't just, I don't disagree. Um, to be targeted, do you for, agree? For, to be targeted agree. for what your race is, where you're born, how you're born, how you're raised. Um, to be targeted for something in nature. I mean, that's really horrible. That's uh, it. I mean, just put it as simple as again. That's, uh, that's bad. That that there, there's low lives in this world, and um, mm -hmm. white. So I'll, I'll just be very direct. You're black. I'm white. Okay. Right. So I haven't experienced the same things in life that you have. Okay. You, you've probably been discriminated against more than I have. You, you've wait, probably again, been victimized wait, wait. because the color of your skin. And that's horrible. And wait, I, wait, wait. I, I support wait, you wait. and I would stand with you to fight against that. Um, Hold and down. I can't slow down for a second. Slow down. So that I didn't quite hear what you said. Sorry about yeah. that. Um, I get up at five eight for work. I'm way past my bedtime. So what did you say? Did you say? Did you say? Hold on, brother. Slow down. Slow down, Brandon. Did you say you you've experienced the same thing I have have as a black person? No, no, no. I said I've not experienced what you. Have. Okay, got it. Okay, that's what you, I you've to say. experienced. Probably, in my opinion, far more hate than I have because of the color of your skin, and that's a horrible thing. This is right. We're in the 21st century right now. Like, why is racism still alive? Um, for someone to look at someone and say, because the color of your skin, where you came from, how you're raised makes me better than you is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I, I, again, I, I can never truly put myself in your shoes because I haven't experienced it. But I will say is this, I think that our nation is far less racist than we ever have been in our history. And um, Not that doesn't justify or take away from what people experience through racism and, and, um, and well, and hate, let, but and let, I, again, I, but I feel that. Okay, Brandon, can you hear me? Because I'm trying to interject here, and you just you just you keep talking. Uh, we got to unpack some of the stuff you're saying. You're saying some things, and we got to unpack it, sir. We got to unpack it. You said you think America is less racist than when? When uh, they're less racist as compared to what? I'm sorry, I had my volume turned down because my son's asleep. I, I, I'm in the garage now. I turned my volume up, so I'll be able to hear you better. Sorry about okay, that. Okay, there you go. There you go. So you said you think America is less racist than it used to be. What what year did it stop being as racist as it used to be? What year did it stop? Because I missed that year. I hate to answer questions, question, but what, I'm going to do that right now. What year do you think it became more racist? It, it there's no such thing as more or less racism. It's just racism because it's still here. So it's been a constant. It's it's it, it hasn't changed whatsoever. It's so, absolutely not changed. So I would say you're right. that Racism has not ended. And that's horrible. Right. But the, it, it's, there's no such thing as progressive racism. That's like saying there's progressive rape. Rape is getting better. No, there's no progressive rape. There is no progressive racism. It's just the same racism. It doesn't get less. I mean, we're still living under a system of white supremacy, right? So I would agree. And actually, I've never heard anyone say the comparison you just said, uh, progressive rape. I actually, that's actually a really good analogy. I don't remember that one. I'm going to say it in the future. Uh, right. For sure. That that was actually really good. It really was. Um, 
<laughs> I, I'm giving you props on that one. That, that really was solid. Um, right. But I do believe there is a far less percentage of people who are, are racist these days than pretty much any time in our history. Um, you know, there's more people willing to stand up and say, listen, this is wrong. And how can you judge someone based on the color of skin or where they're from or, or the experiences they had? And again, I know experience they had isn't racism, but it, it, it's, 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 um, uh, uh, not racism, but, um, it, it's, it's to judge someone, you know, and, and as far as shifting over to, um, where you said system, you know, what, and I don't want to misquote you, you said, you know, systematic, uh, white, oppression. white supremacy. Mm-hmm. You, you said systematic white supremacy though, right? Right. Sist- right. So right. here's what I think of that is, um, and I don't mean to be cliche here when I say this, because again, at the end of the day, all right, like my best friend's a black man and, and we've talked about the experiences he's, he's, uh, had in a, you know, I couldn't imagine having to face that and it's horrible. Um, but I say this is what system can you point out an actual evidence of a system? Because if you can show me a system of racism or a nation, something systematic, I will fucking lock arms with you and I will go fight that. Right. But the okay. problem is. Mm-hmm. All areas of activity are dominated by white supremacy. There's nine areas of activity that, that people engage in. There's labor, law, religion, politics, entertainment, education, um, sex, war. I think that's all nine. And in the, the judicial system. Every single one of those activities are dominated by white supremacy without any exception, sir. Can you name a system or an activity that involves people in our society that is not dominated by white supremacy? That's so, a question. It's easy to say category and say this is, this is uh, white supremacy. This is racist and so on. But to give an actual example of that is something different. That's a problem that commonly happens okay um i, I i'm friends with station station the right you guys probably don't know who she is i'm from missouri but she's very prominent out here um, yeah are you familiar with station the right yeah um the black girl right she's i think she's an immigrant yeah uh, she, she, she is a black girl and uh she has come up from 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 a history of struggling to uh working hard and being very prominent in uh media in the midwest um, and she is someone who preaches um, that the systems are not racist, that yeah, people she, believing it. She now, said, and she'll say anything to get in good with white society in order to eat, which is unfortunate. And that's what white supremacy does to certain black people that makes them say anything in order to survive and to eat. So her her analogies and her perspectives, it's 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 moot to a certain degree because she's another victim of white supremacy herself. You know, I, I mean, I would disagree with that. And I would say that she is someone who, who is very outspoken. She calls out the problems she sees. And that is why she, she no, built the she targets yeah. black people. She targets black people. She has she's one of these what about black on black crime types of people. And she does well, that because white well, people give her money. Let me ask you something here. And and this isn't meant in a fishesis kind of way, but Black Lives Matter the organization. How do you feel about them? Black Lives Matter organization is a con game. It's always been a con game because the organization was really run by white people and they had three black people as the front. And now they're throwing those three black people under the bus, which is another form of white supremacy. You put black people out there as the fall guy. The Black Lives Matter organization has been a con game and black society has never taken that organization seriously. And white people use Black Lives Matter as a euphemism to attack black people without trying to sound racist. Well, I would actually say you probably hit that nail square on the head. Uh huh. Now I'm going to ask you again because you kind of skirted over the question, sir. Can you name any activity that is not dominated by white supremacy? Anything in our society that involves people? I mean, yes. Name it. What is it? Well, let's start with this. I'm a truck driver, and in the industry. Um, I would really say there's no discrimination if, in fact, and I would have to actually pull statistics on this. And so this is saying it from a, from a position of, of not having ever researched this, but at least where I'm from and I live just outside of St. Louis and I work in St. Louis, the majority of the truck drivers at my company are minorities and mm-hmm. they're all very well. And there's no discrimination. That's right. where I've met my, my closest friends and uh-huh. people 
I genuinely love people who I come, I've gone to their, I'm not Jewish, but I've gone to bar mitzvahs. They come, I've had uh, many of those people out to, to my wedding, to my engagement party. These are my friends. Go, and, let's stop at the trucker. Let's stop at the trucking thing. Okay. So the trucking industry, they employ black people. It's still dominated by white supremacy. How would you say it's dominated by white supremacy? What do you think just because somebody works somewhere that the place isn't dominated by white supremacy? I would say that in my experience at the companies I worked at, no one shows any discrimination against any race. No, discriminate. No, 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 no. Discrimination is another word. White supremacy's domination is another thing. That's certain. That's something different. from. Uh, so let's say. That because who I, run- I, I listen, I'm new to okay. politics. I'm, I'm new to the social. What I'm saying. How would you saying. describe the, the the white supremacy in truck driving? I'm telling you, Brandon. You're saying they're they're not discriminating against the workers. Well, black people worked on slave plantations. They weren't discriminated from working on slave plantations. Yes, they were. They were under when they were free. They were underpaid, and when they were slaves, they I were victims on plantation. Uh, they worked. For no money, they weren't discriminated against. The white people sat there and laid up with them. Just because you're in proximity with white people and you're working next to them, that doesn't mean you're not under white supremacist domination. They weren't discriminating. Listen, they weren't discriminating against slaves. You understand? They wanted people to be slaves, to make money. They were identifying them as, as not human so they could justify treating them as slaves and owning them, which was incorrect but, but, and but moral. And, and then when they were free, they were on. automatically paying them. You, I'm going to I'm gonna have to mute you because you're talking over me. We can't do that. I don't want to yell. Because you use the word discrimination. See? You tried to conflate two different concepts. Discrimination and white supremacy, two different things. There's white supremacists like Thomas Jefferson. He was a white supremacist. He didn't discriminate against black women. He laid up with black women. He laid in bed and had babies with them. He didn't discriminate mm-hmm. on who he raped. Mm-hmm. But he still was a white supremacist in his own words. You see? We got to make sure the words are right here. I, I didn't say nation. I said who's dominating based on race. All right? So, and, and let's go back to the trucker thing. The trucking industry is dominated by white supremacy because all the black people who are in the trucking industry, they got to go to the white people to get their licenses, to get their permits, to get their insurance. So you still have to go to white people. They dominate that industry. We have to go for to them in order to get permission. That's white supremacist domination, sir. So, <clears throat> so okay. So as far as what you just said about they have to go to white people to get their licenses and their permits right. and, and so on. Um, so I, I would I would come back at that a couple different ways. One, do they hold a different standard for black people than white people? Um, in many cases, they do because they show nepotism. They show given, nepotism to the white given, people. We take the same exact test on a computer that doesn't know what our race is. Sir, in those industries, some people are grandfathered in, just like with the fire department. They try to play the whole, well, uh, everybody, that, everybody that, takes the same correct. test. No, it's not. That is incorrect. I know the industry very well. I've been in it for 15 years. Sir? No one is grandfathered in nowadays. Back in the day when they went from chauffeur's licenses to CDLs, yes, they were grandfathered in. And there became a standard where you have to retest every five years. And uh-huh. that re- um, No one right now who has a CDL is grandfathered in. No one. Not a single person alive today. We sit in front of a computer. This is standardized across the country through F- FMCSA to where we have to sit in front of a computer uh, and take a test. The test doesn't know whether our, we're black, we're white, we're Asian, we're Hispanic. It, does, it doesn't know that. It's uh-huh. a random. But, you take the test. If you pass. Eventually, you, you have to meet somebody physically. Dollars, you get your license. Eventually, you're going to have to meet up with somebody physically, face to face, in order to get the trucks and the, the the gear and everything else. You're going to have to meet somebody face to face, and if they choose to come up with a way to not let you work or to discriminate or whatever, they can do that if they choose because they still dominate the industry. It is not equal all across the board, sir. I live in Los Angeles right now. I'm trying to buy a building. I'm California. Or- 
So I, I, I finished what you're talking about. Okay. I'm trying to buy a building for a museum. Okay. These people are giving us the run around like crazy. And they do that to black people, even if we have the money. I have millions of dollars to give these people. And they have given us the run around. One race. And also the black people who own businesses out here, they come up with ways to get them out of here. They put what they call nuisance injunctions on black businesses and they skip over the Asian and the Latino and the Arabic businesses and put injunctions on black businesses saying that that business attracts gang activity. It's called I'm white and I say so. They can just make up a rule or a law and arbitrarily apply it to whatever group they want to apply it to. That's white supremacy. It is not equal on all sides, sir. You feel what I'm saying? So, yes, there are people who are racist in this nation along with every nation in this world. Okay. But to say that because some person is racist, that a systematic racism is incorrect. Okay. There is, you show me, you show me, you give me one real example of systematic racism. I will lock arms with you and I will fight against it. Okay. But you can't. All you can do is, is, I can't. Come up I can't. Example of personalized racism, all right, directed from an individualized citizen. That's not true, sir. I'm not even, I have not said anything really well about personalized racism because me talking about the real estate situation here, that's systematic racism. It's systematic. You have developers out here in California, Los Angeles, who work with prosecutors and the prosecutors work with police and they all work together to disenfranchise and target black businesses. My brother Nipsey Hussle was systematically targeted. It wasn't just an individual. You had land developers wanting to get him out of there. He wouldn't move. He doubled down and bought his land. And then the prosecutors working with these developers, who these um, developers give money to and donations to, they have a little systematic clip going on where they were investigating Nipsey, putting injunctions on his store, then all of a sudden some police snitch shows up in broad daylight and shoots our brother, and then the snitch gets a high-powered lawyer who was in the OJ trial. That's systematic racism, sir. That's not just an individual thing. Your boy Cal Rittenhouse, what you saw in the courtroom with Cal Rittenhouse, the fact that he's walking around here after he killed two people, that's systematic white supremacy in action, sir. And how is now? I'll jump back and I'll say this, okay? And then uh, I want to shift, and then I'll shift to what you just said. You have yet to actually show a systematic discrimination or systematic racism or white supremacy. I, I uh, just two examples, sir. No, you gave you. That's like me saying that um, X class of people discriminate against me because I'm a truck driver. All right, you've not given an, an actual, um, a true identifiable situation. I that, have. Uh, amongst our system, where it discriminates against someone. Show me a law. Is there a law that discriminates against someone for being black? Is there is there a regulation that does? Uh, Don't put, no, no, hold on. You keep, muting me. you keep muting me in the middle of what I'm saying. Let me speak. I, okay. And and you've been you've been very respectful. You really have. I've been in tons of Twitter spaces with people who start yelling and screaming. You haven't. You've kept a really mild tone, and it's really. It, I mean, honestly, it, it's very. Um, uh, refreshing it really is but what you have done is continue to mute me in the middle of me saying something so now i'm going to respond to what you said about kyle right now you said that, that was systemic uh, uh white supremacy so here's the how is kyle rittenhouse situation systemic white supremacy did he kill any black people did he shoot any black people no he, he shot some pedophiles okay he didn't in self-defense uh, and was proven innocent in a court where the vast majority of the citizens in that area felt he was guilty before he should have been, he should have been had a court, uh, had a hearing outside of the area to where there were people who were uninfluenced. And yet even in that area, he still was found innocent of self-defense. And if you watch the videos and you want to be completely honest, okay, it was pretty damn clear that he was defending himself. Whether sure. his force was more than the other person's doesn't matter because their use okay. of force. Was okay. Now let's get to the truth. Kyle Rittenhouse premeditated an assault. They had him on video saying that he wished he had a gun so he can go pick up those protesters. Do you know what premeditated? If I, I, I go everywhere with the gun tucked. 
Does that mean if I ever use it, it's premeditated because I carried my gun? Yeah. If you say you're going to do, if you say, I wish I had a gun to shoot protesters, and then you get a gun and shoot protesters, that's did Kyle, did Kyle Rittenhouse say that? Yeah. No, he did not. He said he wished he no, saw protesters and said he wished he that. had a gun. Prove it. He never it's said, I'm going to carry a gun so that I hope that I can kill protesters. No. He had a gun for defense. Like, I carry a gun every freaking day. Not, not being but honest. Because if evil confronts me, I want to be able to combat and, that. Regardless of what that evil is. Slow down. I want to be able to protect my... Well, let me mute you. You're getting a little passionate. Slow down. He did say he wished he had a gun so he can pick off those protesters and that suspected white supremacist judge wouldn't allow that information in court. That judge, who was on the code of white supremacy, acted as his defense attorney. That was white supremacy on display. That judge wouldn't even let him, the, the court, call the people he killed victims. When do you know, people do that, sir? That was white supremacy all day. They wouldn't even let evidence of Kyle Rittenhouse beating up a girl on video come into court to show how violent he was. That's white supremacy, sir. See, white supremacy gives you immunity from law. That's why you can't point to a show me a case of a black person having a damn court sit there and defend you like that and not allow you to call the people you killed a victim, not allow video of you beating up girls, not allow video of you admitting you wish you had a weapon to pick off protesters. When do black people get that type of treatment? Well, I would come back and say two things. One is that. Um, show me where Kyle Rittenhouse ever said that because he did not, absolutely did not. No, I mean, you're getting in bad faith arguments, sir. No, there's a video of I him saying he was your him. is a bad faith. There, hold on, and there's even video of the judge saying, Well, just because Kyle said that he wished he had a gun, that doesn't mean that it has something to do with this case. Even the judge spoke on the video, sir. Okay. He spoke about it. Why well, he reprimanded the prosecution for bringing the video up in court? He like, oh, don't bring that up because there is Bill, no court. Bill board it for all of us to see. Okay. Um, I like to say is, you know what? There's this guy sitting. He's to me, and I know it rearranges people differently. But there's, there's this guy. He's next to me on the screen. His name is N Nuance, uh, bro. And he, he's a colored person, so he keeps responding with these emojis. So why don't we ask him what his thoughts are? Why don't we see if he has something to contribute here? He seems to have a decent following. So why don't you invite him to be a speaker or nuance? You request. I'll, I'll get, get what you. What are your thoughts? Do, do you think there's systematic racism in this nation? Show me. I will get nuance, area. bro, in a minute. Slow I down. Will. Brandon, slow Wait. down. Brandon, breathe. Slow down, brother. It's going to be all right. We're talking. Calm down. It's all right. I'll get nuance, bro, in in a minute. And you say he's a person of color. He's a white Hispanic, okay? So I don't know what person of color is. A person white of color. Hispanic? I, he what? I mean, I, it's granted it's a little bitty circle, but he looks pretty dark to me, okay? And? So he's a person of color, is he not? Does he not experience the what same What does that thing? have to do with me? Other colored people in the nation? Because no, your point what? is... What does that have to do with me as a foundational black American? Because you say that there is systematic white supremacy. He's uh -huh. clearly not white. And he is sitting here responding to everything we're saying. I can so almost guarantee his paperwork white, says that he's white. He, what his opinion is, what his experience is. Oh, no. You said he ain't white. Just because somebody's brown, that doesn't mean they don't identify with white. And that doesn't mean that their paperwork why doesn't. Why ask him white. what you identify? Why don't we? Why don't we? We'll get him in a minute because he'll probably just lie like a lot of them do. Yes. The guy for Terrio from the Proud Boys, they talk about how dark he is. His paperwork shows that he's white. He he claims to be white, the, the so-called leader. He's not the real leader of the Proud Boys, which is a white supremacist group. But Enrique Terrio, his paperwork has him listed as white. I don't care about how dark some non-FBA person is. Well, what why don't... Listen, why don't we just... let Let's... I get on him in a minute, but I'm still dealing with Let's you. Ask him. Why don't we ask him? What do you identify? I'm, he says I identify as white. Just remove his speakership, okay? I'm talking but, to but you. Let's not presume. 
I'm talking to you. I'll get on him in a minute. I'm still working with you, sir. See, y'all like to go grab you a brown person and try to hide behind him. No, I didn't no, no. grab a brown person. This guy is yeah, here. No, y'all love trying to get some brown puppet to, to hide behind. Hey, look at what this brown person says. He said black folks ain't shit. You know that? Wait, no, wait. No, no. no, no, no. That's insulting. The statement you just made is insulting to him because. And I'm insulted. I I'm, I'm insulted that you're trying to get you some brown puppet to talk for you. I'm not. You know, I'm in here saying. Do you know how racist that is? That's extremely yeah. racist. That's white supremacy right there, it is sir. On your behalf. That's you, you trying to get a brown puppet. I don't want that. To... I'm going to go get someone and you... call them a puppet. You're, you you're talking, you're literally someone? treating him like you're a brown flunky to do the dirty work for you. You stand on your ideology, sir. Don't bring your brown flunky over here to me. I want to talk to you. I want to know your ideology because you're the person in the position of power. All right. I want to talk to you. Let me know your views, sir, because you're up here talking about you're running for office. All right. You're talking about running for U.S. Congress. I so, haven't talked about that. Hey, wait. I haven't talked about that one bit. We had a it's on, your, it's on your profile, on my, dude. What are you? It's on your profile, Brandon. It's on your page in a big banner. Brandon Wilkinson for U.S. Congress. <laughs> what are you talking about, Brandon? At Come. any point. In this space, have I ever said, hey, I'm running for U.S. Congress? No, I haven't. It's on I, your I, I, engage, I engage in the conversation with you. Now, second. Because I want to know, feel, if you get I feel elected, like, hold on, because if you get elected with your ideologies, I'm, we're in trouble. So I need to know what's going on with you. You understand? So, Don't find a, a brown puppet and hide behind. So and, let's go back, and let's go back. Why Brandon, you can, Brandon, wait. Slow down, Brandon. Brandon no, no, you slow down. So, Brandon, br breathe. Because you sound like you're about to get a gun. All right? So I don't want you to start shooting up nobody. Calm down. All right? Calm down. There are two things. One. Okay. Okay. You said. Slow it, down. It, it, slow down. You, slow, wait. I want to go back to something you said earlier. You said, what law is it that proves white supremacy that's the trick bag of white supremacy you guys operate on common law so the rules are not even written down anymore but you guys understand the rules and you practice so you common law a rule that doesn't exist and say that means white supremacy even though it's not on paper it's right. common law. you're about to meet me i understand i know because you keep muting me um because you're scared of having a a back and forth you want to you want to control the, the debate or this you damn right I want to control it because this is my platform and I just muted you right now because I haven't really been muting you, but I'm not going to let you babble. You got to answer the question, sir. So like I said, white supremacy is the common law. They used to write it down and put it in bold letters and put black water fountain, white water fountain, blacks not allowed, whites only, whites only, whites only. After the 1960s, all they did was take the signs down because they understood through common law that we're supposed to still practice white supremacy in certain manners. So that's where I was going with that, sir. So do you agree or disagree with that? 100%, I disagree. Also, I'd like to say, you continue to insult this guy next to me nuance bro by saying he's a puppet you don't know him i didn't go seek a puppet as you said this guy hopped in here on his own volition on his own free will and i only cited him because he keeps raising his hand he's raising his hand over and over again so what uh, i'm talking to you so you're scared of bringing another person in because you're worried that a person of color like yourself might actually disagree with you and i don't know if he does or doesn't i'm just saying the guy keeps you laughing and throwing know, clapping, he, 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 raising yeah, his hand I, you are you obviously know that he shares your ideology. That's why you keep trying to pawn him off. I think he does. I do. So I, because I, he laughs at everything you say. Which I want to talk. I might bring I, something to the table. So let's bring him into this. I want to talk to White Daddy. That's who you are. You're White Daddy. I'm White right. Daddy? Well, I have, a dad. I, have, I have a two year old son. So I that's have a dad. Why, well, I don't want to talk to your flunky. You run things, you are in a power position. So How do I run things? Because you're a white man in a system of white supremacy. So you are in a position where you run things with other white supremacists, sir. Really? That, that is so truly hilarious. You know, I grew up living in a trailer or homeless most of my life. Until uh -huh. I, 
So, so that white privilege really benefited me, didn't it? Yeah, because you live in a trailer, but you got a million dollars worth of whiteness. Oh wow, that that's incredible. White and white itself is is monetized. For example, let's go back no. to Kyle Rittenhouse. Let's go back to I, Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse. No, no, listen to me. Kyle Rittenhouse is a dirty little broke hillbilly, but in that courtroom, he did got killing he, pedophiles. Okay, okay. Kyle Rittenhouse got tens of millions of dollars of defense in a courtroom. A black person couldn't pay for what Kyle Rittenhouse got in that courtroom. Do you understand me? A black person, no matter how many millions you have as a black person, you couldn't pay to have a courtroom bow down and elevate and protect Kyle Rittenhouse where you wouldn't let the people be called victims. You wouldn't let Kyle Ritten, Rittenhouse's video comments be allowed where he talked about getting a gun against people. You wouldn't let video of him beating up a girl get in court. You wouldn't let video of him and pictures of him with white supremacist groups come into the courtroom. You couldn't show his connections to the Boogaloo Boys and the Proud Boys. A, a, a judge sit there and bent over backwards for this guy and acted as his damn defense lawyer and had the media going along with it and had this guy up in court fake crying with the worst acting imaginable and they still let him get off. A black person couldn't pay that at all. That's where that million dollars worth of whiteness comes from, sir. You got a million dollars worth of whiteness. You being in a trailer don't mean nothing. Where you at, Brandon? Where can I cash in that million dollars of whiteness? Right. When you go to court, when you go to court, that's when you cash it in. When you go to court, if y'all commit any kind of crime, that's when you cash it in right there. That million dollars worth of whiteness comes right in handy. When a black person is competing with you for a job, you go cash that million dollars worth of whiteness in. When a black person is competing really, with you. Affirmative action. You really going to go there, Brandon. Uh, uh, well, let's let's actually address something you said. You said, Brand, did you really Kyle say? House, no, 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 Brand, let, let's go on. Oh, no, no, don't say because you know you didn't screwed up. Did you really fix your lips to say affirmative action, sir? Brandon, get over here. Don't don't say something and then run. Do you want to withdraw your testimony, sir? <laughs> Are, are you really going to go there? Are you going to insult our intelligence? I didn't run. I didn't are run. You, you hit me like a typical you, coward. Are you going to shows any kind of opposition that can, yeah, can shut you up? You mute them. You, you them. All right. All right. That's and I'm muting and I'm muting your little ass again. You're going to slow down and you're going to respect the conversation, sir. All right. You're not running things. This is not the meth lab that you run. Whatever you do, you slow down. All right. You're getting very hostile. As our brother Neely Fuller said, when suspected white supremacists can't manipulate you with words, they get very violent. And you need to calm down just because you're. Have I been violent? Have well, I? You're, 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 you sound, you're getting kind of violent, sir. Have I, I insulted you? Have I, have I threatened you? You, you, you just called me a coward. When we we're not going to you. You're like, you're being a coward because I'm not letting you back. You're the coward. You continue to silence but, someone who opposes you. Okay, That's you're not a coward. Because you have no courage. I'm doing it again, see? Black daddy runs this right here. Then that's the problem. You're not used to black people checking that ass. You're saying a bunch of gibberish. It's easily debunked. And you're getting frustrated because y'all sit up here and practice all your BS. You practice running this con game on black folks. And right now, it's so easily debunked, you're getting frustrated because you're like, damn, this nigga's on top of it. Because y'all like to try to be around dumb Negroes so you can manipulate them with words. But when y'all get around some black folks who ain't dumb and who can check you with all of this gibberish you're talking, all of a sudden, boy, y'all start getting a little bold. I can hear your face getting red over there. No, nah, you talk big, but you're scared to talk to anyone who actually challenge what you're saying. That's why you silence people who, who agree with you. This you're is... not bad, whatever you're race baiting, typical, 
Okay, calm down. You're getting very mad, sir. Now I will. I'm just mad, dude. You did. You don't know me. You don't know me. I'm not mad. I'm. Yeah, you. You're I'm very. Fucker, right? Calm down. Calm down. Yeah, the headlights is jumping all over your scalp. You don't know what to do. Calm yeah, down. I'm literally smiling like you're here because I think you're hysterical because you're um, a typical one inch deep, two miles wide guy who knows talking points, who starts saying them, and as soon as someone tries to contradict them, he shuts them up by yelling, screaming, or in this situation, muting them. All right. Mm -hmm. You have no depth to yourself. You're you're you continue to say these this nonsense. You say that the the system is uh we have systematic white white supremacy, but you can't give a real example. You do these blank state no shut up. Shut up. I I mean, don't tell me this shut up little mayonnaise man. I've given several examples and you're just mad because I'm giving good examples and you can't refute them. So you just keep talking in circles out of anger sir you're very angry because your 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 white supremacist talking points are being debunked sir is that what the problem is you're not used to your white supremacist talking points being debunked go ahead brandon no the only debunking is you but you want a lot to happen by you science people you give an anecdotal not even anecdotal, because you're not giving any real examples of situations. You're giving anecdotal um, white supremacy in our in our systems of our government and so on in society. But you're not actually truly giving any examples. Again, you're an inch deep and a mile wide. All right, all right. I've You've brought no substance. You've brought no substance to this. And and give a good example. So you sit here and you start to say that that Kyle just to use one example, Kyle Rittenhouse that that the defense. Could, or I'm sorry that the prosecutors couldn't use the word victim in the case of Kyle Rittenhouse. Well, the thing, the fact of the matter is, if you knew anything about law, and I know a lot about law, is this: oh. you're not a victim if you're the aggressor, and nothing has been proven at that point as who was the victim or the aggressor. That's why victim was not allowed to be used. Oh, because they were attacking. Oh, 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 the oh, you're not a victim if you're the aggressor. Let's slow down. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, wait. Let's let's unpack what you said. Okay, you said you're not a victim if you're the aggressor, right? Generally speaking, under the terms of law, correct. So why was George Zimmerman considered a victim of Trayvon Martin when he was the aggressor? So he Zimmerman was a piece of shit and what he did was wrong, but he didn't attack Zimmer or he, he did not attack uh, Trayvon Martin. He followed him. And you know what? I'll sit back and I'll say because I was kind of a smart ass and a fighter and a punk. When I was if some guy started following me, I'd have punched him in the face, too. And that's where Zimmerman was wrong. Is he started following this kid? What are you doing in this neighborhood? What's going on? Da da da. And this seventeen-year-old kid who was athletic and so on, like I was when I was his age, would not have tolerated that. So he punched a guy in the face. And the guy pulled a gun and shot him. All right. Now, Trayvon Martin was the aggressor. That doesn't mean that Zimmerman was not in the wrong. Okay, because he was. He should have left oh. the damn alone. He was a racist by base he was probably a racist based on all the information available following a kid around because he was black in a neighborhood that didn't have didn't have very many black people all right he was probably a racist but he did not attack trayvon martin trayvon martin attacked him he defended himself with lethal force do i agree oh. with that situation no i don't okay so the armed white supremacist which was zimmerman who was the aggressor with a gun ran up on an unarmed kid and he attacked him, according to the witnesses and the court all the case, other. The court case ruled otherwise that he did not attack the Trayvon Martin. Yeah, attack. yeah, they, they, yeah. It's I'm white nuts. They just but use it's another example of white supremacy that the yeah, black they just, kid they use, they the they white use guy, white. which wasn't but, actually so, white, by the way. Zimmerman this is I'm white nuts. Do you think Zimmerman was white? Do you think he was white? Because he wasn't. Yes, he is. He ca he no, was not. Was white. See, now you're just lying. Everyone here, go he, Google yes, he, it. Go look up. Was Zimmerman white? Go look at what his dad. He classifies himself as white, as most Hispanics do, sir. You're just babbling. Zimmerman does classify himself as white, as do most Hispanics, sir. Okay, all right. You know what? You're right. So I. So you just again contradicted yourself. No, no, no. You're, you're right. You're right. I identify as black. Okay, so sir, you're proving my point. Okay. It's a racial double standard. When the double standards are based on racial lines, that, sir, is white supremacy. In the Kyle Rittenhouse case, aggressors, the people he killed, they can't be called victims. 
But George Zimmerman, who was the aggressor, who got out of a car with a gun and chased down an innocent kid, he's the victim, even though he was the aggressor. And then you use this convoluted I'm white and I say so narrative that Trayvon Martin beat up George Zimmerman, which he did not do. But it's all I'm white and I say so. And the I'm white and I say so narrative proves systematic white supremacy, sir. So you're proving white supremacy right here for me, sir. Um, well, then your metrics are really skewed in a very poor way. But um, all right. Looking at the court case, going back to Trayvon Martin and, and Zimmerman, um, the court agreed that Trayvon Martin actually assaulted Zimmerman before he shot him. Was Zimmerman just by the white supremacists in the court? Right. They got on no, code. No, no. The white supremacists. Also, also I'm going to point out, I'm going to point something out very important right the, now. The white supremacists, I, the white supremacists in the court, because the court system is not some type of static entity. It's based on people and their beliefs and the people who dominate it are white supremacists. So the white supremacists in the court agreed that the black person should be disenfranchised and murdered based on race. Well, you know, I, you know, I'm going to be honest here. I actually really enjoy this with you. You're really um, enjoyable to have a conversation with. If you would just not mute people so they could actually, you know, say what they have to say, that would be great. Uh, right. You won't, you won't. Right. Of course we know you won't. Uh, but I just want to say like, you continue to call me a supporter, not exact words, but you know, everyone here knows what you're saying. You're saying that I'm a supporter of white supremacy and I'm a white supremacist and so on. But the problem with that is that I identify as being black. So how, how with me identifying as a black man, I identify as black. Do you, do you have a problem with that? Um, no, not at all. I have no, no problem with that. Well, because I'm a black man now, so I experience the, the white supremacy you speak of. And, and it, man, it breaks no, my heart. No, because you're lily white, and when you go out the house... No right? How do you how do how do you identify with being black? In many ways, I have very Such close friends. Black. I spend so much time in St. Louis, and in a very how are you Lily White? How are you Lily White, and you identify with black? How does that work? Because one of my closest friend, a guy who I we constantly call each other brothers, he is sitting there and said, "This is my my black brother from another mother. You're just colorblind." He says it all the fucking time, all right? Because he looks at me as a brother. And I hang out with him and his friends and everyone else. And they all look at me and they treat me as an equal. Why? Because they don't see color like you do. You want to push this narrative of racism when America is not racist. So I made, so I made your community. So I made your community a bunch of white supremacists. It's my fault that they practice white supremacy. My community, as in like St. Louis, Missouri, where we are dramatically, overwhelmingly black, is, is, is white supremacy. Is, it's a white supremacist city. Are you familiar with St. Louis, sir? Are you, I've been are you, to St. Louis. Come on, come sir, on. I was there during the Ferguson. You know the demographics of sir, St. Louis. I was out. There, I was out there during the Ferguson riots, sir. The fact that we had oh, to go out fighting. there. Oh, so you're burning down buildings and destroying black neighborhoods in Ferguson? Uh, um, there was a lot of you white supremacists doing a lot of that stuff. No, that no, it actually was wasn't. Too. It was it was overwhelmingly black, and there's tons of videos to validate sir, that. Sir, sir, I was. Buddy. Sir, in many of these places, there were white supremacists working with the Boogaloo Boys and all of these other groups burning down places. Last year at the George Floyd thing, you had white supremacists on tape burning down buildings and it was being blamed on black people. So we don't want to go that route, sir. We don't want to go that route. We well, I, would, to... I would, you know what, I would agree with something you just said there, and that is that there uh -huh. was going during the verse and are during the George Floyd, George Floyd riots, there were white people burning down buildings. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I saw those videos too, but mm -hmm. in Ferguson, I was there. Mm -hmm. 95, yeah. 88% black people burning down the buildings, breaking in and rioting and so on in their own neighborhoods, degrading them. Didn't, I didn't see, I didn't see white people. Oh, what they, there's, they didn't have the, their own you neighborhood. Said you were there. You said you were there for the I was, so it wasn't their so own neighborhood. What stores did you break into? Did, did oh, you burn? No. You said their own neighborhoods. They didn't control anything in those neighborhoods. So it, it wasn't their own neighborhoods. The black businesses, for the most part, were spared. So it wasn't their neighborhoods. No, they, they were weren't. The vast majority of the businesses that were burned down were black owned. Are you fucking kidding me? No, it Please, wasn't. Get up. 
Go look some shit up. You don't know uh, anything. This is my neighborhood. Okay. I, I've been out there. I was out. No, there. you don't know shit. You don't know shit. You just made it very clear when you said down, the majority, scooter. you did. You don't know shit. When you said uh, that the majority of businesses burned down were not black, you are wrong. The vast, vast majority of businesses burned down were black owned. Okay. You don't know anything about that's what not true. About. That's not, not all. Well, that's not true. Go look it up, dude. You don't even have any idea what you're talking about. It was vast majority black owned businesses that burned down. I watched the AutoZone get burned down. I watched the QE burn down in person. Okay. Those were black owned businesses. The vast majority of businesses burned down in Ferguson were black owned. The vast majority of businesses owned in Ferguson are currently black owned. All right. You done? I like the song. Okay, because okay, you, you out there getting ready to fight. Shit, I had to put some music on for your ass. Okay, well, I had to show your, your false narratives and everyone here go Google. Uh, You'll see down, Rocky. down, Rocky Balboa. Shit. Now, listen, I got, hey, listen, I got to get up for, for work in like four hours and 15 minutes. I still got to take a shower. So I'm going to give like five more minutes. I, I, uh, I actually, we've been confirma- confrontational with each other, but I, I've actually enjoyed this. I really have. Yes, um, indeed. Yes. Because I, I love talking to people with different beliefs and views. Um, you're incredibly wrong. No, um, I, I'm I, not. I, you know, right. And that's why you're so happy. Absolutely, No, no, you right. absolutely are. And that's why you continue to silence me because you don't want to let my point be heard. A lot of um, Longest period of time we've spoke without you silencing me, and it's fantastic. I love it. Yes. Um, but I, 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 I'm not joking. I'm not bullshitting right now. I actually have enjoyed this. Um, yes. I just wish that you would be more open and forward and be willing to listen to the discussion of someone who believes differently than you, from a different background than you, from a different... No. What I will not do is listen to somebody who's spewing white supremacy and passive-aggressive anti-black racism. I am not going to listen to that. I'm going to treat that with a stern indifference because I know that it's manipulation and I will not allow myself to be manipulated, sir. When somebody is practicing a passive form of white supremacy, I'm going to be on alert and I'm going to watch and monitor every move that person makes, sir, just for my own safety. Wouldn't that make sense? Only when you're a coward. Mm hmm. Well, coward is what people in your community do with those ambush killings. These people who work in law enforcement, sneaking up on unarmed black people, shooting them in the back of the head, breaking into black people is wallowing with cowardice. And the white supremacists who ran up there in Buffalo shooting a bunch of elderly black people at a grocery store. That's the epitome of cowardice. And there's people in your community that's even defending that. So if we learned anything about cowardice, we learned it from you, sir. I mean, my community is in Buffalo. I, I made it clear, I thought, that I live in St. Louis area. Um, here, here, here's what I ask. Let me ask you something. The, the, the white supremacists and suspected white supremacists community is global. You guys do just don't have one little piece of territory here. Your community of suspected white supremacists, you have the same mindset all over. So you're a global community, sir. Go ahead, Brandon. So so you're saying because I'm white, I'm a white supremacist? Suspected. That's why I use the word suspected. I don't know for sure, but Brandon, I suspect that you could be. So until I prove it otherwise, I have to look at you. Let me ask this. Let me ask you. I want to ask you two very serious questions. All right. No, no, yeah. no, no, I'm not trying to raise bait or, or bait or anything of the sort. But if I was a white supremacist, would I have very close black friends? Yeah. Would I? Wait, wait, let me finish. I'm someone who has helped many veterans because my oh. brother's a legitimate war hero. And I, I when my eyes were open to the way. Okay. Right, let, me, let me pause it because I don't want to hear all of that, to be honest. I don't want to hear about your the Make-A-Wish Foundation where you hug Negroes and pet them and I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Yes, sir. Just because you have black friends, even if you have a black spouse, even if you're a white person with black children, that doesn't negate the fact that you could be a white supremacist, sir. Dylan Roof's best friend was a black dude. And the black dude was a Sambo who sat here and said, hey, I didn't know that Dylan was racist. This white supremacist who just shot up our good black folks up there in Buffalo, two of his best friends was one Hispanic dude and a black woman. 
just because you have a black friend, relative, lover, wife, spouse, that does not negate the fact that you could still be a white supremacist, sir. How about you let me say what I was going to say, and then you can sit there and premises afterwards, okay? To be honest, I don't. Come on. Come on. Let's be reasonable. Okay. Uh, cause to be honest, Brent, I'm getting bored because you're, you're kind of typical. Because you refuse to let other people speak. If they disagree with you, you can shut them down. And, and so much uh, a typical coward move. So, so right, Brandon, you know, like I said, inch deep in a mile wide. Erase. Brandon, sir, the mayonnaise factory opens in a few hours. You got work to do, sir. You got to get back up there to the mayonnaise factory to do your job. Let me let you go to bed, Brandon, because now you're boring me. Have a good day. That's loud. All right. I, I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear it. God. Very typical. Oh, goodness. Lord. Now, Nuance, where you at, Nuance? Okay. Now, Nuance. Nuance, bro. I've seen you before, Nuance, bro. I, I'm going to get you on in a second, Nuance, bro. But yeah, Brandon was very boring. My brother Tariq, good to see you again. What's going on, Nuance, bro? You know, you used to follow me, Tariq, because we had that exchange. You promised to follow me, but you unfollowed me recently. That seems like very feminine behavior. Why would you do that? Well, I learned it from your granddad because, you know, he he walks around with his man tits out. So I'm trying to get like him in certain areas so I can get some money like your granddad. But what's on your mind? Well, I actually wanted to, you know, Brandon actually did say something incorrect. So I wanted to support what you said, which was he said that Kyle Rittenhouse never said that thing about wishing he had his gun so he could like shoot at those people or whatever. You were actually right about that, Brandon. You know, I'm sorry to say, you know, Tariq was right about that, but that was not material to the case. That was two weeks prior to the incident that took place. And that sort of that sort of exculpatory, well, that, that sort of evidence that's excluded. Stop. Stop. That's just some white not say so. When somebody sits here and says they wish they had a gun and then go get a gun and do exactly what they said they wanted to do. Yeah. If the only way you don't get that in court is if you're white. OK, so that's just some white not say so. So let's not try to pretend that there's some kind of legal basis for this I'm white and I say so gibberish. Mm. Okay. So Tariq, if you ever say you want to kill someone in your life ever, does that mean you forfeit the right to self-defense for the rest of your life? Self-defense, my ass. You show up there with a bunch of white supremacists. He was out there with the Boogaloo boys. No, he okay. wasn't. No, he wasn't. Stop it. Yes, he was. They've admitted it. Some of the Boogaloo boys admitted they were out there with them and their own film with them. Yes, they were. Yes, some of them could be Boogaloo boys out there. That doesn't mean he was out there with the Boogaloo boys, like as a part of them. He's okay. not a part Thank of the Boogaloo boys. You. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not about to hear these bad faith arguments. Thank you so much, Steve. Black family, when you deal with these anti-black races and they get into these bad faith arguments... They'll lie out the, out the side of their necks so fast. They'll just say anything. And I want black folks to understand how these anti-black races work. These folks will say anything. It's nothing for them to lie. And their justification is I'm white and I say so.